Welcome back to another week of Bengals Nation. Let's hear it. We're only going to talk about week one a little bit because week one doesn't matter anymore. We're on to week two in those Baltimore Ravens, and they get to come here again, third time in 10 months or so. But let's welcome our weekly guests. They had seven total tackles between the two of them up in Cleveland in week one, DJ Reader and Mike Hilton. Welcome back, guys. What's, What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, you all dried out from week one? Because it looked pretty miserable out there in Cleveland. Yeah, it was tough. It was a little rainy. It was good, though. It was all right. Just a little good AFC North football. That's all it was. As defensive players, I know the offensive guys probably hate playing in that kind of weather. Do you guys like it, though? It don't really matter to me. I mean, as soon as I step out there, the elements, I, don't, I stop thinking about it. I'm just ready to play. So whenever it's Sunday, I'm ready to go. I actually enjoy it. I, you know, for, for me, it, it, you able to get the ball out a little more. Uh, the receivers ain't got the same footing, so they can't run their routes as smooth. And, you know, quarterbacks can't throw it as good, so it's an opportunity to get some hands on the I ball. thought it was a really good uh, defensive effort from you guys. You limited them pretty much the whole game. Uh, Mike, what was the key to shutting them down through the air? Uh, number one is just making uh, Watson read different coverages. Um, obviously, we, we were able to contain the run pretty well and put it in Watson's hands. Um, we just made them make difficult, difficult throws, and that gave time for our, our guys up front to uh, pass rush and get home. Week one is always so weird, DJ, because you don't really know what to expect on either side. How big of a difference is it from week one to week two? Uh, I think uh, the biggest difference is everybody's got film out there, so you know what people are going to be doing, or at least have an idea of what people have going on. Uh, you know, the first week, everybody's come out of camp, kind of kept all your plays a secret, you know your identity of what your offense is going to be, so it's tough to kind of read, but... The week two, you kind of know what it's going to be, and it's a little bit more, nah, I wouldn't say predictable, but everybody's got their cards out there. We saw Dax Hill get his first interception out there. With the help of the defensive line, I might add, Zach Carter got the tip. DJ, when you see these guys get the interceptions, but you had a hand on that, you get jealous a little bit, or are you just happy nah. you got the turnover? Not me. I'm just excited we got a turnover. I can just go over to the sideline, get some Gatorade, relax a little bit. The guys back up. They did a job. Everybody's celebrating in the end zone. So. I mean, it's all about being a team player, so we hope that they get it. It's a saying, tips and overthrows, got to get those. Got to so get those. Hope those guys get them. I want to start some sort of stat for the D lineman. You get the tip, you get, like, credit for half an interception or something. It's only fair. Nah, they got it. They, they got, got it. it. Okay. We need to get those guys getting paid. I need them to get it. They just want sex. We want the ball. <laughs> it, it, it goes hand in hand. All right, let's check in with the head coach, Zach Taylor, after that game week one. All right, Zach, week one is always you're not really sure what you're going to get. What can you guys take out of that week one matchup in Cleveland? There's a lot we can learn, you know, from a um, on-the-road divisional game and sloppy weather. That's that's how a lot of them are going to end up being. So you got to win the field position battle and be more disciplined than we were, and ultimately that's what got us. I know you can practice the wet ball and soak the balls in, in buckets or whatever, but being able to get that experience in that for when you're trying to play January into February, that's got to be pretty valuable. It does. It helps shape your plans, you know, a little bit to see what was effective and what wasn't. Um, so, you know, personally I could have done a much better job in a lot of areas, and so those are things that will improve going forward. How much did the weather affect your game plan because the weather wasn't supposed to rain and then it was kind of misting it it looked miserable on tv at least yeah it's challenging for both teams you know and so obviously uh we, we had our, our issues dealing with it um i would imagine they did as well and so it's it's god is very fair in that aspect he reigns on both teams and uh, so you just got to deal with it and make the most of it uh defensively thought they played really well uh was able to stop the Cleveland offense for a lot of it. Probably the weather had a factor in that too. What would you take away from the defensive performance? Yeah, I thought our defense really gave us a winning effort um, in a lot of areas, and and you got to do something to take the pressure off of them. You know, have a big play in the return game, have a, have an explosive play on offense, get some points on the board. Um, but they don't expect that. You know, that's the beauty of our defense. They don't expect any help. They expect to try to win the game themselves. Um, and so they thought that they did a lot of really good things for us. I thought one of the cooler moments of that game was Cheeto. Ten months earlier, had his season and end. he's back on that field comes up with a fumble recovery just to see him kind of come full circle sure. be back out there yeah that's that's it's a it's a quick recovery for a corner to be able to play in a game this quickly um, off of that injury and so proud of the work that Cheeto's put in you know and and uh, he gave us he gave us a lot of great effort in that game and a game that could be a wild turnover day you win the turnover battle don't turn it over at all get two of them I know that's one of the factors that you always say you want to win the turnover battle going in that's got to be a positive sign going going forward. Yeah, it's positive about uh, that we protected the ball in those elements. Um, 
not positive to lose two to nothing and, and be one of the low percentage teams that ends up not winning the game. You know, if you look statistically, so um, something we, we got to take better pride in winning those turnover battles and, and it leading to a winning outcome. The offensive line, that's a good defensive front that they go up against. Jim Schwartz is known for being very aggressive. How do you think that they did? I thought they did some really good things that we continue to build off of. You know, they, they gave us um, enough to, to be able to move the ball and function, and unfortunately, we weren't able to support that. When we return, the guys bring out their special guest this week in safety, Tyson Anderson. I want to welcome y'all to episode two of Getting Defensive. I'm your host, Mike Hilton. This is your host, DJ Rita. Yo, 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 yo. Today, we got a real special guest, man. Second year safety, right out of Toledo, Ohio. Y'all give a warm welcome to Tyson Anderson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, Tice? What's good with y'all, man? Good to see y'all again. Good to see y'all again. Man, good, man. We're going we gonna to jump straight to it, man. Uh, rookie year, you know, you, you missed a lot of time, got hurt. Uh, second year, you, you can already see how much you improved, man. Just just tell me how that first year was mentally. Uh, mentally, it was for sure was, was hard, for real. Yeah, yeah. It for sure was hard, though, just because, I mean, coming from Toledo, my hometown, going to my University of Toledo, I was a man in my school, and then coming here with y'all, and being in that situation, you feel me, not playing, but I was just grateful that y'all was as cool as y'all was for real, because it could have been a situation where y'all wasn't that cool, I didn't get along with y'all, I didn't really rock with y'all. But other than that though, I mean, it was for sure hard other than that, but I'm just glad that y'all was as cool as y'all was and as encouraging y'all was through it all for real. That's what's up, that's what's up. I spent a couple weeks over there with you in rehab, Tyson. We spent like five weeks together. It was oh, a good yeah. little time getting it in. I, I, I learned you were a man about your process. Can you can you get the folks a little bit insight of what Tyson's process is when it comes to preparing for the season? What's going on? No, yeah. So um, as far as just the season or every game, it's an everyday process. Like, what do you go through? What do you want to do? Like, what, what what's your goals and steps every day? Okay, so obviously, um, like my role on the team right now is uh, I ain't playing that much on defense. So just. Um, Honing in on my special teams role, a gunner, uh, L5 on kickoff, a left guard on punt return, um, left center on, on K, uh, KOR. So just honing in on what I can do to help the team for real on a, on a weekly basis and just trying to, feel me, I ain't really just trying to be the best special teams player I can be so y'all boys can go out there and uh, get some plays inside the 20, so I can get some tackles inside the 20 and turn y'all up before y'all go out there for real. What's I saw? You, you're, you're a newly father, man, so uh, yes, Lord. kind of explain just that whole, your whole mindset, man, of becoming a father of a little girl at that, too. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous at first. <laughs> I was, I was nervous. I ain't, but being a dad, I mean, I've always, like, I always, um, I got a great dad. So, like, he always, like, I just, I see myself as my dad, for real, for real. He was always there, always around. A uh, leader in the family, provider. So that's just all the things that my dad showed me. I just try to do and just try to be as present as, as I can be for my girl. You know, we be gone all day for real. So just trying to help her out as much as I can when I actually do get home. But me and the dad, man, it's so cool just to watch her grow up. She'll be five months on, on game day. So we go turn up for her, man. That's what's up, man. If you ain't nervous, you ain't trying, you ain't doing it right, man. Everybody gonna and be then, nervous. And then, so. and then guess what, though, Mike? My, that, that first preseason game, though. It was her first game ever at the Bengal Stadium. I had two picks. Had two picks. Tice, boy. Hey. It was a sign, man. It was a sign. <laughs> That's a good sign. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Tice, man, we appreciate you coming up on getting defensive with us, man. Uh, we expect a lot of big things out of you this year, man. No, yeah, we're going to have each other back for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, appreciate y'all. It's Baltimore this week. Again, third time in the last, I don't know, nine, ten months that you guys have met each other. Uh, what do you expect out of this Baltimore team here in week two? One of the most talented teams in the league from top to bottom, you know, and, and they've had coaching consistency there over the years. So uh, these are always challenging games. These are always very low possession games. So you got to maximize the possessions. I think uh, in the playoffs, we had three possessions in the first half. Kicked a field goal, scored a touchdown and fumbled, you know, so um, you know, you got to take advantage of the opportunities you're going to get. Lamar Jackson signs the big contract. He's back at their starting quarterback. Well, how have you seen him develop as a quarterback from maybe when you faced him as a rookie until this point? 
I haven't seen any development the last couple of years. I've seen one of the premier players in the league every year you face him. You know, and he's very dangerous uh, with his arm, number one, because they got great weapons in the passing game. Uh, but when you take that away, he's equally as dangerous with his feet. And so that's, that's why he's got some of those rare qualities um, as a quarterback that can beat you two different ways. And so you got to do a great job containing him and taking away a lot of the weapons they got in the pass game. So uh, defense certainly has to work it out for him. You're at home. You get the home opener. How much is that nice coming off of the week one to be able to be at home and kind of get back to things here in Cincinnati? It's good. It's a great chance to, to you know, get back into to the right winning spirit in front of our home crowd. Um, we've had great success here in these one o'clock games playing at home. We've had great success at home in general. And, and part of that is because of the support we get from our fans. They make it very difficult uh, on the other team. Um, you know, there's potential they got a new starting center. If, if their center ends up not playing, they got a potentially new other lineman in there as well. So the communication, especially in week one, can create some real problems for the other team. So we're counting on our fans to give us that support. How different is it week one to week two? Because week one, you're not really sure what you're going to get. Yeah. In week two, you start to kind of get a little idea. Yeah, it does feel a little bit like there's the week one season and then there's the weeks two through 17 season. You know, and there, there's a lot to build up to week one and um, so obviously you want to start fast and start on the right note we weren't able to do that uh, but we're excited to, to put that one behind us and move on to the Baltimore Ravens. Bengal Tizers sponsored by Sensoy. My guy Sam from Sensoy. Sam what do you got today man? Well it's an exciting week. We've got the uh, Ravens in town so we made you a uh, little crab cake chili crisp aioli so you got that sweet heat uh, a little panko breadcrumb on top, so a little crunchy. Now you know now, I'm, uh, it, it's, before I eat this though, is this, is this part of the, did you get some of this stuff from Kroger? This is a, a Kroger exclusive. Okay, awesome. So uh, am, am I worried about the spices, man? It shouldn't be too spicy, you know, Should chili, chili crisp is a little bit of sweet, a little bit of heat, but a lot of flavor. What do you think? You're <laughs> another one, another, right another, here, another winner. I love another it. Another winner here, man. Here we go. This Good is, deal. Can I finish this right now? I hope you do. Is it okay that I can do this on the air, guys? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish it, all right? Awesome. This is really good, man. I appreciate that. You know, what's really cool is we use our soy sauce, which is Ohio-grown ingredients, our soy sauce salt, so it's that extra umami pop of flavor, and then the chili crisp, which just rounds everything out. It's a great combination. I think I might have to take this plate over to my wife and let her take a taste of it. I think that's a good that's idea. pretty good stuff. Good. I appreciate that. Coming up, Zach Taylor hits the Telestrator to break down what went right up in Cleveland in week one against the Browns. Coach Taylor's Breakdown, sponsored by Wendy's. Take a look at a couple of plays here from yesterday's game against Cleveland. First one here, if you look at our defense, um, getting a first, first sack of the season right here, doing a good job. Jermaine plugging the B gap on the backside. And Logan doing a great job wrapping over the top when he sees that back step up to block. And so then you get a two-on-one over there on the back. So great job there by, by Jermaine defeating the block on 84, getting a sack, creating some momentum on defense. That was really good to see. And then you look at down in the red zone, uh, they had a good drive on their second drive of the game. And so they're going to run a little power play, and we do a great job punching the ball out. So whether it's Jermaine, Logan, all those guys getting involved, Nick Scott doing a great job getting involved, and then Cheeto falling on the ball, doing a great job securing it. That was a big, uh, big turnover when they were in scoring position. They were going to walk away with a minimum of three points. Our defense took that off the board, which is great to see. Then they motion out to empty. So you're going to get some one-on-ones with these tackles. Trey Hendrickson does what Trey Hendrickson does. He does a great job winning his one-on-one, -on -one, getting his first sack of the season. So, again, that's a matchup we always enjoy anytime you get a one-on-one -on -one over there with Trey. And he does a great job coming through for us. You can see Josh Chupow getting involved as well. So, um, really good job there by the defense line and the coverage in general. And then the last defense play we got is an interception we're going to end up getting here. So I'll show it from the end zone video. They're, they're on a little bit of a half, half roll play action movement, trying to pull the guard to get out in front. And as he breaks the pocket, because Cam Sample does a great job, uh, push him out of the pocket. Zach Carter does a great job tipping this ball right here, and he goes right to Dax Hill, and so Dax gets his first career interception. Great job by Dax, great job by Zach Carter, great job by all those guys getting the quarterback out of the pocket and creating that opportunity. So um, two big turnovers there by the defense that uh, we would like to capitalize and score more points off of. Then you look at the offense, we're just going to run a little duo play over here to the left side, so you're going to get a lot of double teams. So you're going to see Cordell Volson and Orlando Brown doubling up to number six here. 
And so they do a good job coming off the second level. You're going to see Drew Sample and Mitch Wilcox and 12 personnel doing a great job working through the, the defensive end all the way to number 22, Grant Delpit, and mixing with a really strong run, not going down on first contact, not going on second contact, getting extra yards there. That was a good good momentum run. You can see the, the linemen are feeling a little bit in the run game when you start to get some, some of that stuff. So that was good to see. And then another run we had here, you're just going to see a wide zone run off of a fly motion. So again, working these double teams up to the second level, up to number five, Walker. And Mixon does a great job putting his foot in the ground and finding the cut and then out running the safety again. So again, great job with yards after the contact by Mixon. Great job by the lineman covering up the first level and allowing him to make the read. Anytime he can get to this point and see our numbers, our jersey numbers on our offensive lineman, it's usually a great spot for the running back to be in. And uh, So that was really good, really good effort by the run game right there. And then this is off the run game, just throwing a bubble. So we're going to get a slot pressure with the safety coming down. So we're going to throw the, the bubble over there to Jamar. T's in a tough spot here because he's trying to assess uh, who's going to hit first. Is he going to bail? And the safety's going to be the first to come. So he's doing a good job assessing uh, who he should take first, trying to cover up Denzel Ward. And then once he realizes that that block's not sustainable, he tries to get up and find one more. But great job breaking tackles there by Jamar. Trying to give us some momentum here. We had a, a punt return to the five-yard line and um, trying to get ourselves out of there. So Jamar's doing his best to try to get us to that, that third and one situation there. So it's a good job executing by him. And then you look at the last one, really tough look here. They're going to present like they're playing cover six. So you're going to see a tight corner, half field safety, quarter safety, quarter safety, uh, quarters corner. And on the snap, uh, what we're going to get is what we call a soft corner cat. So they're going to bring the corner, they're going to bring the nickel. They're going to play two invert, okay, with the safety playing a half field, corner playing a half field, the buzz safety coming down to a flat, and the linebacker playing a flat. So our play action protection, we're fooling the guard, is not, not a great uh, protection here versus this disguise they got. Burrow does a great job feeling it. Jamar does a great job finding the cover two whole shot void over here, away from all the traffic. And those two guys do a great job making a, a tough play worse on a on sock corner cat versus 22 invert. Um, great execution there by, by Jamar and by uh, Chase there. Zach is back to give us what the Bengals must do to get their first win of the season at home against Baltimore. This is my glory. Game day matchup sponsored by Gold Star. For this week's matchup, the Bengals defense will have its hands full with one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in all of the NFL. Lamar Jackson comes to Paycor Stadium, a place that he has seen a lot of success. And it'll be up to the Bengals linebacker Jermaine Pratt and Logan Wilson in order to slow down Jackson. And a guy as dynamic as Lamar, you can only hope to contain him, but it's something that the Bengals feel very confident they'll be able to do in this matchup. I mean, he's a dynamic um, quarterback. You know, that guy can throw the ball and run the ball with his feet. He's dangerous. He's the most dangerous player on the field when he has the ball. So, you know, you got to control, control how much damage he do. You know, try to make him throw the ball more, use less of his feet. You know, he got now he got more weapons out there at the Robert receiver course, so obviously he wanted to throw the ball, showcase that he can throw the ball, which he's getting better each and every year. I can see him getting better with the techniques and stuff like that, trying to throw the ball. So he's a dynamic player. Keys to the game, sponsored by Kia. All right, Zach, what must the Bengals do on Sunday to get a win here in the jungle? Home game, you got to capitalize momentum. You know, we'll have the fans behind us. You'll, you'll be able to feed off their energy. And so when those explosive plays come or the turnovers come on defense, we've got to do a great job of rallying behind that, turning that into points, and capitalizing on the momentum that our fans can give us. A reminder, you can come watch Bengals Nation live and in person Wednesdays at 6.30 at the Kroger OTR Eatery. And, of course, always watch the show Saturday nights to get you ready for game day. All right, now that we're all up here together, Mike, DJ, I want to ask you about one of the highlights of the preseason, I think, for everybody. Tyson, you talked about it a little bit. First game out there, two interceptions. Mike, how happy were you for this guy who he missed his whole rookie season because of an injury? First game out there, he does that. Oh man, I'm excited for him, uh, especially us being in the same room together. I know how hard he worked for that moment. And I remember uh, before the game, he said, Mike, I'm going to make a play. I didn't know if it was going to be a TFL or what, but he made that pick sick, man, and it, it was a great play. I mean, for me, like, not only was it a pick, like, he cribbed it, he got in the cribbed box. It. Like, it. It's important to get in the box. Like, that's, hey, that's your first one, took it to the crib, get in the box. To the crib. Celebrate for all of Toledo, Cincinnati, everybody. Turned up for him, hey, it was great. 
It was good to see. Do you think he was going to make it all the way, run it all the yeah, way back? My boy can oh, you're, roll not, you're not going to catch him. Nah, my boy can that, roll that, now. That's 4-3 four, hey. four, speed right there. <laughs> that boy can fly. <laughs> I mean, are you one of the fastest guys in the DB room? Is that what Mike's saying? Yeah, the fastest? I'm, nah, not the fastest. We got DJ Turner just came in running 4-2. I, I can't do that. You might be top two, though. You might top be right two behind. Top two for sure. Top two for sure. That's, that's props coming from Mike. I, I thought for sure he was not going to let you have that one. <laughs> All right, you guys got Baltimore on Sunday. Got three defensive guys here. It's a challenge. That Lamar Jackson guy, I hear he's pretty good. DJ, how do you keep him from running all over? Uh, you just, you know, he's going to make some plays. Uh, you got to understand they're professional too, and he's a special player. But, you know, us up front, we just got to keep it sound, man. Play our technique and know that it takes 11 guys to stop their team. It's 11 on 11, and we got to make sure our 11 better than their 11, honestly. All right, Tyson, because he can do so much running around, they got some receivers too. How does that change how you guys kind of got to be aware of where he is at all times, but also not let those guys get loose? No, yeah, he for sure going to make a lot of plays with his feet, extend a lot of plays. So our coach always talk about plastering to receivers once he start running around down there. So it's always going to be a second play after the first play. So we just got to continue to run around, have good eyes. The receivers, they signed a bunch of guys, Mike. What do you see out of them? Uh, it's probably the best receiving core that, that Lamar has had since he's been there. Um, Obviously, starts with Odell. You know, he speaks for himself. Um, then they drafted um, Zay Flowers out of Boston College in the first round. A uh, shifty guy, can, can make a lot of plays. And then, obviously, one of the better tight ends, Mark Andrews. Um, so, so we got our hands full, but they, they, this is the type of games we live for, we're, we're, and we're excited to go out there and uh, execute our game plan. Tyson, I know you've played preseason in the jungle, the first regular season game. You ready for that? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm for sure ready. I mean, obviously last year, oh, yeah, y'all get rowdy in that jungle. Y'all get rowdy in the jungle. But last year, just uh, feeling that the crowd energy in that place was just always super electric. So I can't wait to go down there and make a big play and just hear the roar of the crowd. DJ, 0-1, it can happen. Nobody wants to start 0-2. What do you guys got to do to get that win? Uh, we got to go out there and get a dub, man. We got to go out there, do our job, um, play our assignments, man. Just let everything handle itself. I think uh, we all play free. We're going to be in the jungle. We're going to have that cr home crowd on our side. So we just got to go get the job done. All right. And the home crowd here at Bengals Nation, second to none. Appreciate you all coming out here tonight for week two of Bengals Nation. One final big who day. We'll see you next week on Bengals Nation.